Hi folks, Keith Fenner has a Porsche, I think it's a 944, that he wants to make his own dash insert for, kind of like this. Today, we're gonna try to model the basic shape of this up. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So I had the chance to hang out with Keith earlier this summer. We got to talk about this project and I said, let me, I'd love to help out. Let me take a stab at doing this infusion. I'm not really a, uh, there's a lot to learn from a CAD standpoint. I've already learned some lessons. So today we're just gonna take it easy. This isn't gonna be the final product or necessarily perfectly dimensionally correct, but rather how do we get, you know, this is a pretty funny looking shape. So let's dive in folks. If you're interested in seeing more though, stay tuned and subscribe because we're gonna be adding these fuel gauges into it and creating, trying to make sure this thing's gonna fit and we're collaborating with Keith on it. And Keith is, I believe, gonna actually machine this from scratch and it's gonna fit in his Porsche and it's gonna even have, see here how is this um, hood piece kinda comes out over the gauges, so should be pretty fun. I'm excited to see where it goes, but uh, this project to me feels overwhelming, so take it easy, first step, let's just get this basic shape down. First thing we do, new component. We'll call it turn right dash V1, and I'll save it. Video demo. So at first I thought maybe I'd work on this angled piece here, and I later realized mm -mm, it's actually gonna be easier to work with our four feet. So again, we're gonna get into how I attempt to create this dimensionally accurate later in the next video. But today I wanna to just give you guys a general overview. Um, so these two legs here are about 5.85 apart. Let me write that down. And this is on center 3.27. What's their diameter? 0.29. And you can see they are all um, co-linear. Co what the, what's the, they all point the same at the same angle. So I'm gonna hit C for circle. And I'm gonna sketch on this plane right here that's perpendicular to the uh, Z-axis. Uh, turn my origin back on with this light bulb right here. And I'm just gonna sketch a circle over here. Actually, you know what, I'll go ahead and sketch four circles. I don't really care. The distance or dimension, just getting started. D for dimension, and I'll say this is 0.29 because that was the diameter. And if I double click this again, see how it says if I hover over it, the D1. Now what I can do when I click the next circle, and place the dimension. Instead of typing in 0.29, I can actually type D1, and it's formulaically linked back. So if I wanted to change these diameters later, I can change them all at once. And we know it's 5.85 in the X, so D here to here. Oops, okay, so that's a little quirky thing in Fusion. I didn't want the angular dimension, I wanted a horizontal dimension. There we go. 5.85 divided by two. And it's this distance to here. Come on. There we go. 3.27 divided by two. Uh, line these up so they look a little bit better. Cool. So now, a bunch of ways I can do this. Horizontal vertical is a constraint uh, that if I click it, will snap this one vertical with that. The same constraint clicking the center dot here and the center dot there will snap those two in line. I'll still have to place some dimensions, so I'll hit D on my keyboard for dimension, and the distance between the center here and the center here is the same as this one. So I'm just gonna click on the 2.925, and you see it types in D5, so it's linking it back. That's what I love about parametric CAD. And the same thing, I've gotta do a dimension between here and here. and that'll be the same as this one. And I can use horizontal vertical to get this last guy in place. Sweet. So really, I've only got um, three dimensions in this whole model, the diameter of the circle and the distance it is uh, over and up. 
E for extrude. And for now, I'm just gonna hit, click on the four of them, and I'll just extrude them up. Well, here, let's look. The tallest one, you know, is something like 1.5 inches. We can change that later. So now I got my five uh, posts. To create this angle, Keith actually gave us a little drawing here um, showing, can you see that, that the angle here is 66 degrees. So again, um, this is how I'm self-taught. You just kind of figure it out, take a stab at it. Don't worry about being perfect on the first shot. So I'm gonna hit L for line, and I'm gonna sketch on this plane here. So that's the plane that would go through the part uh, this, this way. And let's see if we're holding the part like this. I'm just gonna sketch something approximate here. So don't worry too much about the snapping constraints. I just wanna kinda of get my lines in place. So see where that exists right now? It's, it's sort of, it needs some work. So parallel constraint forces this line and that line to be parallel to each other. I can already tell I won't need a parallel constraint between these two because it's already got the little perpendicular constraints in the corner. So I'll show you if I try to do it, it'll say that I'm over constrained. No big deal, that's cool. I am gonna say perpendicular constraint between here and here. Oops. And what else do I wanna do? Dimension D, click here to here. So what is this approximately? That's a, eh, the thinner part is about 1, 1, 6, 0. 0.16. And I'll do the same here to here. Link it back, 0. 0.16. And, okay. Um, so obviously we've got a lot, more, a lot more work to do, but if I take a look, so again, you know, ballparking it, 1.72 from the sort of center here to the, the peak. So let's see here, if I hit P for project and I click this, see how that gives me a line that is my, the mm, diameter of that circle on the same plane here. So now what I can do is I can hit D, actually I'll hide the bodies that I extruded. Don't need to see them. If I, okay, so I want a dimension on a midpoint. So I'll go sketch point that snaps a midpoint. Now I can hit D for dimension, and the dimension from here to here, I want to be 1.73. Stop sketch, turn my bodies back on. Um, the last thing I really haven't done is the height, but let's not worry about that now. E for extrude, and I'm gonna change it from one side to symmetric, and the overall width of this part is seven and five eighths. So I'm gonna click on this profile and I'll type 7.625 divided by two, cause I'm going half that each way. And from a cut to a join and click okay. Uh, I will go modify fillet click this top edge and at the same time the inside edge. And now I can say like one inch, uh, make sure maybe even more, 1.5. We'll have to measure that to type. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Forgot the 66 degrees. So uh, we can go back and do that right now. I will right click on this sketch two and edit. So uh, this drawing is a little bit harder. I had a hard time reading it first because it contemplates, I think the uh, additional, oh, maybe it's just had a weird, like a orthographic view. Anyways, um, it would be, a, yeah, kind of like, it might just be easier to move the paper. So like this, so this D for, oops, D for dimension, this to this um, was 180 minus 66. There we go, that looks a little bit steeper. And I will go ahead and move this up just for now to say, say point. Okay, stop sketch. So now, 
again, we're just, here's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to figure out, is this, I hate the word workflow, but is this workflow, is this process gonna work when I actually spend the time now to measure it, put pins in here, go over to our surface uh, plate and get the uh, you know, radius gauges out and so forth. And I think so, because now you can start to see, not half bad, maybe that radius is too much. Right click, edit, say change it back to one inch. Not bad. And I think, save it before I forget. The um, last thing that I couldn't, or I did figure out was I want to get rid of the post. Actually, can I just hit them and hit delete? Yes. Amazing. Folks, look, I don't even have to do like a combine or break or whatever. Just deleted those top things. Friggin' amazing. So that's my Fusion Friday for today. I also wanted to post this because if you guys have suggestions about um, things I am should be thinking about as we take this project to the next level, I'd love to hear them. Um, yeah. Hope enjoy your weekend, folks. Take care. See you next Friday.